Hello everyone. Welcome to Acolyte Digital Connect, our thought leadership series that focuses on the latest technology trends and business insights featuring our experts. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting topic. Now the combination of 6G and satellite services not only enable a seamless and uninterrupted connectivity throughout the world, but it also unlocks new opportunities across diverse sectors. And going forward, telcos and satellite service providers will play a critical role in enabling this ecosystem. In this webinar, we will explore how the coming together of 6G and satellite services will bring in endless opportunities and drive the creation of a borderless and connected digital world. But before I introduce our speakers for today, let me quickly take you through some of the ground rules for this webinar. If you have any trouble hearing the audio, please open the audio panel and make sure you're connected to the audio mode of your choice. During the session, by default, all the attendees will be on mute. If you have any questions at any point, please ask them in the questions panel and these questions will be answered at the end of the speaker's presentation. In case if you are logged out during the session due to any technical error, you can rejoin using the same link. So really looking forward to a very insightful session and to give us all those insights today we have with us Roop Hans, senior consultant with Acolyte who has over six years of experience across travel, loyalty and rewards and now telecom. Roop brings in her unique perspective to this industry and has expertise in product management and consulting along with a keen eye for quality and design. Our second speaker is Sahiti. Sahiti is principal consultant with over 10 years of experience in the telecom industry. Sahiti has extensive knowledge of the domain, OSS applications, and global customer management. She has contributed to multiple digital transformation projects and new product launches while helping in developing and launching training content for digital partners. So without further ado, I will hand it over to our speakers. Welcome to the session, Roop and Sahiti. So Roop, over to you. Thanks, Swati. Hi, everybody. So before jumping on to what 6G is and how is it really defining and changing our lives, let's see how mobile communication has evolved over a period of time. So the evolution of mobile communication has rather been revolutionary. We merely started with voice communication and evolved our way to high-speed data transmission, IoT applications, and whatnot. Now here, in the pictorial depiction of 6G, you can see a classic example of device-to-device -device communication. Now, as an example, I'll take a subset of this, uh, uh, this picture where uh, the vehicles are interacting with CCTV cameras, drones, and other vehicles in order to relay important information like uh, traffic congestion, uh, speed limits, and even accident prone, prone areas. And even the roadblocks are uh, you know, catered in such communications. Now, why this is vital? This is vital uh, because it leads to better road safety and as well as you know, it can prevent uh, accidents in the longer run. The, uh, Applications of 6G are widespread. They are touching every industry across the globe. And this is because of the higher uh, connection density as well as the higher frequencies that 6G promises to target. And because of these two factors, uh, it is making sure that internet is a vital part of our daily lives in terms of the application that 6G is going to tap, like uh, smart cities, automated cars, hospitality, agriculture, robotics, and even holographic communications. Now, uh, one important and a very interesting uh, uh, example of the you know, 6G technology and the application that it is going to target is underwater internet of things. Sounds interesting, right? As interesting as it sounds, it means that uh, there are automated uh, vehicles, underwater vehicles, that are going to you know, traverse the seafloor in order to uh, find out new resources, find out new organisms, and even you know, judge if there are any uh, kind of uh, calamities that, that are going to happen in farthest of the seas. And 6G is making it all possible. 
Now we had done, uh, you know, a detailed webinar in the past uh, around 6G and explaining all its applications as well as the entire spectrum around it. The strength of 6G can definitely be seen in, um, you know, the KPIs that it is promising with it. It's not just targeting massive connectivity and a higher data rate, but it is also, uh, you know, promising the fact that it is energy efficient and spectral efficiency is also, uh, you know, a part of the KPIs of 6G. Now, what does that really mean? It means that, uh, uh, you know, with the massive connectivity that comes with it, uh, it will make sure that the quality of, the, of that connectivity is also maintained at all times. Now, 6G is also targeting a higher traffic capacity, which basically means that uh, the number of connections that are, uh, you know, connected in a given area that are much more in case of 6G. Now, uh, 6G is definitely a much, much more improved version of 5G. And it is not just in terms of the high speed, uh, high speed data, but it is also because it is promising to cover the entire globe. You will be able to uh, find connectivity even in the farthest and the remotest areas of, uh, you know, of the earth. And 6G is making it all uh, possible in no time. Now let's explore the world of satellite services. What are satellite-based services? Satellite-based services are basically, uh, you know, different satellites that are interacting with each other by exchanging signals. And when we, uh, you know, talk about satellite-based services, three main services come into our mind, and that are uh, telecommunications, broadcasting, and data communications. Now, telecommunication, as the name suggests, is, uh, uh, you know, basically a cellular networks uh, that we, you know, end up using every day. And uh, broadcasting involves your television and uh, uh, radio signals that are directly delivered to the customers. Whereas in case of data communication, uh, uh, you know, it is facilitated by Internet and uh, it involves exchanging data from one point to another. Now let's see how satellites really communicate with each other. In the pictorial depiction that you see over here, uh, the satellite communication involves three main elements, which are the transmitter, the satellite itself, and the receiver. In this case, the transmitter is transmitting the signal to the satellite, and the satellite is modulating it and sending it back to the receiver, which is present on the Earth. Now, satellites really operate in three different orbits of the Earth, which are geostationary, medium Earth ob orbit, and low Earth orbit. Now, as the name suggests, the medium Earth orbit and the low Earth orbit are closer to the Earth. And that is the reason major cellular networks use these, uh, you know, satellites which are revolving in these two orbits in order to avoid any kind of, uh, you know, any kind of latency or lag in the connectivity. Whereas the geostationary satellites are generally used for broadcasting, which, uh, uh, you know, which is, which is because they generally cover much, much more larger area of the earth. And that's why broadcasting needs that. Now let's see why do we really need satellite services in the first place? The answer is really simple. It's to reach the unreachable areas of the Earth and to make sure that all, uh, you know, all ways of connectivity and communications like Internet, phones, etc. are available to everybody across every part of the Earth. Now, there are many pioneers in this industry altogether that are working on satellite based services and giving fruitful results already. For example, SpaceX is on a mission to provide internet worldwide. And it is not just the fact that, uh, you know, it is uh, targeting the accessibility for it. It's making sure that it is given at a price point, which is affordable, as well as the quality is not compromised along with it. Now, Inmasat is making aer uh, aeronautical satellite communication a dream come true. It is making sure that a connected airplane is not a luxury, but a necessity at this age. Whereas when we talk about ISRO, 
ISRO is uh, you know targeting a wider terrestrial reach so that there are means of communication even in the uh, most rural parts of India. Now the applications of satellite based uh, communication are tapping different industries altogether. Imagine sitting 30,000 feet above in the air and taking a beautiful sunset picture and sending it to your family in real time. Sounds fascinating, right? In-flight Wi-Fi is making it all possible. When we talk about satellite phones or GPS, it is majorly used by the governments and military sector in order to uh, you know, identify and track the routes of their troops and making sure that seamless and uh, secure communication of any kind of confidential information is sent across. Now, GPS is also used by the space industries in order to track and uh, change or modify the position of the satellites that are above us. The manufacturing and logistics uh, industry particularly is facing one drawback, which is uh, of dead zones. So dead zones are basically, uh, uh, you know, areas of the earth with the low connectivity or no connectivity at all. And this can not only, uh, you know, cause any kind of uh, monetary loss to the manufacturing industry, but can also uh, be proven fatal uh, to human life because it increases the chances of uh, uh, human error in such situations. But with the uh, presence of satellite internet, it is, uh, you know, it is making sure that uh, a well-connected uh, vehicle is what we need in today's age. Now, satellite uh, communication is the backbone of the entertainment industry. Who doesn't really love watching uh, uninterrupted uh, uh, telecast of their favorite sports match or uh, a seamless live stream of a live concert they always wanted to be in, right? So currently, uh, we have around 4,550 satellites revolving around us. Uh, and this number is uh, projected to increase to 15,000 by 2028. Just imagine the possibilities that satellite services bring with it. With that thought in mind, I will hand over to Sahiti to take us further in this ride. Thank you, Ru. Um, so through the course of the upcoming slides, uh, we're really going to look at the need for a digitally connected world. Um, what is the fusion? Why do we need the fusion of 6G and satellite services? And what does the fusion of these two fetch us? So the burning need of the hour is really a truly and a completely connected digital world. However, only approximately 37% of the Earth's landmass is really connected with the existing terrestrial infrastructure. And that is really just due to the sheer vastness of our globe. And what this means to us is there are dead zones, like Roop has already touched upon. Dead zones are nothing but pockets or spaces which have no form of infrastructure, communication infrastructure set up. While on the other hand, we have technology that is advancing and evolving at a very rapid pace, possibly faster than the blink of an eye. So it makes it extremely crucial for us to have uninterrupted access to service connectivity 24 seven and interruption in service connectivity, uh, possibly like even down to half a millisecond could not only mean loss in terms of communication, monetary loss, but also could pose a threat to life in certain scenarios and becomes a necessity in certain other scenarios like self-driven cars or driverless automotives. So this, if we take the example of a self-driving car, it entirely relies on connectivity. Like the name suggests, and we all already know it, uh, it is driving, it's in an autopilot mode. So it relies on connectivity to keep communicating with it. And let's assume uh, if we are going to a remote corner and we lose connectivity, then we are stuck there until we get connectivity back. That is one kind of a hassle. But imagine being on a road in traffic in an autopilot mode and then you lose connectivity. That could probably pose a threat to life as well. So all of this really brings us to a realization that 
every form of communication infrastructure that exists today be it aerial space or terrestrial is simply not enough it won't cut it for us to be able to connect from one corner of the globe to another so that brings us to the point of uh, this whole uh, the topic of this hour which is the fusion of 6g and satellite services so why do we need this fusion that is because the existing terrestrial and satellite communications however established they are um they're they're fairly successful uh, to give them due credit they're fairly successful and the the main areas of applications have already been touched upon by roop they're successful in a way but they still struggle with their own shortcomings and challenges and one of the reasons for example is topographical features like terrains hilly areas mountains oceans all of these they challenge the service penetration for both uh, satellite and um, our terrestrial communications there could be natural disasters like hurricanes tornadoes earthquakes and because of this there is a collapsed network and that ends in a service disruption also in cases of war zones or certain countries with um, special military regulations there is an intentional disruption of service connectivity all of these really hinder the uh, successful convergence or successful integration of air space and land in terms of communication and that it becomes extremely essential for the proper convergence of terrestrial satellite and aerial networks to provide us with a secure seamless anytime anywhere any speed connectivity and 6g will bring us make this possible when it when paired with satellite services why 6g why not 4g or 5g it is simply because of the kpis that 6g offers the area traffic capacity be it the extremely low latency um or be it the smart intelligence of sensing things in the environment seeing through walls all of these kpis make 6g a perfect match for satellite services for us to be able to live in the world of um connectivity that is 24/7 and a seamless access to um network communications or communications all together uh the picture here shows us a, a very seamless integration of ground air and space network using 6g and how this touches upon our day to day life and could be used to improve our quality of life and make things easier for us so the first example here is simply the establishment of a terrestrial infrastructure in much in layman terms it is nothing but the cellular network that we use today and that is happening through the use of the ground station the drones that you see in the picture and uh, the zeppelin which is an aerial means of communication in the air so in the example one we are use there is an integration between the terrestrial which is land and the air aerial form of communication the second example here is maritime communications here there is an integration between the zeppelin again which is an aerial form of communication and the satellite which is spatial through the communication between these two the maritime communications are possible and in simple terms maritime communications is nothing but when we are traveling on leisure cruises uh, from one possibly in an ocean from one corner to another or across oceans we simply have uninterrupted access to uh talk text video browsing throughout the length of the journey of the cruise not only for leisure purposes but also in cases of naval communications or military strategies or communications within the uh naval uh, domain is also possible through the use of uh, the satellite and airborne communication integration the third example here takes its form in smart agriculture and the use case that is being touched upon is crop monitoring so as you see in the picture there is a blimp or nothing but a hot air balloon with remote sensing capabilities so this hot air balloon uh, could trap what it could offer in the smart agriculture field or how it monitors crops is um, it could traverse through the area of the farm or the field and it has the ability to take pictures all of this is happening obviously via the communication uh, of uh, the different infrastructures that have been set up and it could take pictures of healthy crops in a certain color and unhealthy crops in a different color 
what this means to a farmer or any research scientist that is looking at this data or the pictures is they can do the needful and categorize them based on simply by the color of the picture instead of uh, simply by sitting at home or their labs and not having to physically travel or walk through these fields themselves it could also act as a digital scarecrow um, the term sounds very fancy but what it means is it has the ability to um, say send out signals and alarms similar to human noises so when it senses that a bird or a worm or any insect that has the potential to uh, damage the crop comes nearby uh, it just sends out these shooing alarms or noises similar to human sounds and that shoes away the bird or any damage causing uh, agent and that way it could protect the crops and make sure it is monitoring them all the time and then it can also monitor whether they are ripe healthy unhealthy infected and all of those things so the last in this example but definitely not the least is a disaster management use case where you can see there is a forest fire that is not only being detected but also being mitigated via the communication of the drones and the hot air balloon and spatial communication. So if the simple picture could already give us an idea of four examples in our day-to-day -day life, then we can only imagine what the possibilities are. So all of this really is path breaking. It not only shows us uh, the technological advancement, but it also shows us how humans can interact with each other. Uh, how we can improve upon our quality of lives. So I am a huge Marvel fan and um, Simply with the use of augmented reality like holographic technologies in case of like we see in the Iron Man uh, Just the ability to talk to one another from one remote corner to another with the use of this holographic technology is really uh, very exciting for me um, so all of this said right what is the buzz in the industry about 6g and satellite services so even though 6g and satellite services are very recent significant amount of work and partnership is already in place uh, the first thing touched upon on in this slide here is the partnership that was announced between t-mobile which is a cellular uh, provider cellular network provider uh, in the us and spacex so the partnership between T-Mobile and SpaceX promises uh, all the customers with all its customers with uninterrupted text coverage throughout the continental US, Hawaii, parts of Alaska, and even across the borders, uh, water borders. And they aim to expand this text coverage with the use of, uh, with the addition of voice and data. The next or the true pioneer, uh, in my personal opinion, in this uh, space is SpaceX. Um, SpaceX has already done a lot of work in this area and is already serving a lot of people. Uh, SpaceX's Starlink satellite has already around 400k subscribers globally and its recent partnership with Hawaiian Airlines also aims to provide not only complementary in-flight Wi-Fi but also at a speed that has never been offered before. Um, so SpaceX not only is working in the commercial area or domain but it is also working in on uh, on a human level where in the ukrainian war starlink satellite uh, helped or aided the military not only in their communications but also helped people the normal people impacted by the war and their families it kept them connected together digitally during the difficult times simply by allowing them or providing them a means to communicate to each other and know their whereabouts now the third one here uh, is the royal caribbean which is an international uh, uh, destination cruise or vacation cruise provider their partnership with spacex announces that they will provide their customers uh, with uninterrupted internet and the speed like never before possibly at a very um, catchy price point if not complimentary and this will be the biggest wi-fi deployment of satellite services in the travel industry and this is proving out to be a very fruitful market and the projections are by 2026 uh, the satellite services will will almost give us a revenue of uh, 145 billion dollars and i think three or 
three or two years ago, it was just 100 and around 120 billion dollars as a whole. So um, all of this almost gives me a feeling or a vibe that I am in the future already. I am sure some of you listening to me also feel that we are uh, talking about future, but not really. The future is here. The future is now. So if you look at some of the examples that have been provided on the screen here, um, some of these are already in the markets. Like the first one that is touched upon is the self-driven cars. The more we talk about this, the less it is because this just this uh, use case just gives us an example of what is about to come, how drastically our lives are about to change. So the driverless cars, like many of you already know, are already serving or servicing in uh, many regions of the globe, but they are working with dead spaces in the equation. Now with the combination of 6G and satellite services, if we completely eliminate the dead zones altogether, um, simply put in a poetic way, uh, man could tread the path untreaded or they could just go where the uh, road took them, right? In a William Shakespeare-ish way. Uh, the next thing here that is touched upon is smart mining. Smart mining and how the usage of 6G could help us is 6G when paired with high directive beam steering antennas it has the capability to see through walls and what this means is um, in case of mining we could detect the presence of underground natural resources like oil water bodies etc without having to physically dig through the shackles of the earth and in mining also it could help us by seeing through essential elements and rocks uh, elements and minerals in the rocks without having to begin the process of extraction. The next use case here is the maritime communication um, where the 6G is known to have a very high accurate, uh, very high accuracy when it comes to position and location information uh, and that could be tapped, that potential could be tapped for maritime and underwater communication and it could be used not only for research purposes um, for that were touched upon by Ru, but also in our naval communications, aiding our military. And the next example here is smart environment sensing. So one of the use that simply means that it has the capability to uh, the level of intelligence that it has uh, rather uh, to sense things in the environment. So if we look at our phones, many of our phones already show the air quality and that is happening through 6G. And if we combine it with satellite services, it could potentially sense the environment and also give us precautionary and preventive measures. Like, uh, for example, it could tell us the presence of toxic materials in, in food, uh, the presence of allergens around us, and uh, maybe the presence of... Uh, arms and other metals around us and that way it could improve if we take the example of a person living with allergies um, allergies could range from minimal to life-threatening so simply being equipped with the information that they are about to enter an area where there is the presence of extreme allergen means that they can uh, be equipped to either go there or just avoid going there altogether and this is a significant improvement to the quality of human life. And there are many other examples that could be leveraged with the combination of these two. And smart goggles. So um, we had phones that wasn't enough. Now we wanted uh, we wanted watches to talk. Uh, we wanted our watches to do everything for us. That's not enough. We went on to microwaves, refrigerators. We basically want to use anything and everything to communicate with people, to browse. So we are now at a point where we want our sunglasses to actually talk. We want them to be able to call, text, browse. So that is what the smart goggles are, offers. These, these are already in the market with Bluetooth connectivity. And if now we want to leverage 6G and satellite services, I can only imagine the havoc that will be created in a good way with the usage of uh, smart glasses. And the last on this list is space tourism. And this is pretty self-explanatory. Thanks to SpaceX, this needs no introduction. Um, the bookings are open. And for all we know, there are people packing their luggage to take a tour up space and come back and tell us all about it. So um, this is all good. Um, it makes me feel uh, 
uh, very very futuristic and very uh, positive but what as a digital partner what is it what in it is for me how should i be prepared to embrace this chaos and be prepared so satellite services is very very new and it needs a bit more time as a digital partner or as a provider to be able to understand how to leverage this beast but uh, 6g is i think in a very comfortable space mature enough where its potential could be tapped so being a digital partner i think there are uh, certain things that could uh, be done ahead of time to make us ready and uh, ready to cater to the customers that want this the first thing in this space is the core functionalities or establishing a digital framework so the first is laying a foundation or the building blocks and that could be established by building a very structural ecosystem that is in line or accordance with all the laid upon open apis and digital frameworks that makes the seamless integration um, very easy and also reduces the complexity when the time actually comes to integrate uh, with various platforms the second is the metadata so now we have the foundation we need the metadata to plug into it and extremely uh, a lot of care and thought has to be put in to develop the metadata because it is the crux of everything it is the crux of the framework that is fed into everything so um and that must be a lot of care must be put in to have a seamless integration through the usage of building data models apis and what not and the third here in this space is communication right and communication not just between people but like roop had touched upon it is thing to thing everything around us is talking to every other thing so with ai and ml um it is very complex it's not easy even though we see a lot of code that is being pushed out pumped out into the market it makes it seem very uh, easy but a lot of care has to be put in and a lot of testing has to be done to be able to uh, develop code for the things to communicate with each other and also the most important thing here is to give a very pleasant customer experience and that is what puts a digital partner ahead of the other so simply by having something that has is very robust and offers uh, every possible feature still doesn't cut it we need the customer to have a pleasant experience and that can only happen with the code that is being developed the last is cloud everything is either on the cloud or is about to be on the cloud and the the digital partner really has to embrace this and put a lot of thought into adopting the cloud infrastructure and cloud applications and also they have to rethink how the key kpis of cloud need to be redeveloped and security is the most essential among them because when everything is in the cloud it poses a huge security risk um, not only for uh, have a creakers but also competitors so um, i think according to me these are the things that a digital partner needs to think about before uh, declaring themselves ready to be able to hit the market um, and tap into a lot of customers all of that said i find myself a uh, very very fortunate to be living in a in this revolutionary era where dreams are turning into reality even before someone is thinking of them um thank you all for your time over to you swati thanks thanks roop and sahiti those were some really interesting insights that you both shared we do have a couple of questions that have come in uh, so the first question is that uh, do you think uh, satellite and 6g will help open new revenue streams or it will only play a role in bridging the connectivity gap uh, i will take that so yes to both uh, simply put they can bridge the gap the combination of the fusion could bridge the gap uh, for example in the driver the self driven cars uh, they did not need we already have uh, self driven cars in the market and they don't use the combination of 6g and satellite services today but to bridge the gap of dead zones and make it much more efficient uh, we need the combination of 6g and satellite services they could also serve as a backup of each other for example uh when we in the era of 4g i would like to say the era because we are now in the era of 5g we were constantly seeing on our phone screens the switching back and forth between 4g and lte right 
so in the future 6g and satellite could be an example of that where they are acting as a backup of each other and opening up new streams uh, or many of the examples that i've touched upon like the smart mining uh, is one example which opens up a new revenue stream imagine the uh, savings in infrastructure or cost capex and opex if we call um, when we are uh, it could open up a new revenue in terms of medical gadgets or uh, medical areas where for sensing out uh, developing wearables for sensing allergies and all of that so there is a huge opportunity for opening up new revenue streams as well so 6g could do both 6g and satellite services can do both sure sure great and the next one is that who are the real end customers of satellite based services in the market currently uh, I'll take that, Swati. Uh, sure. So currently, uh, you know, the end customers are basically your B2B customers, uh, which are basically your enterprises and the government, uh, let's say. Now, that's solely because uh, the USP of uh, satellite-based services is the expanse that, uh, you know, it covers and the area that it covers. and you know, it can reach the remotest of the uh, remote areas uh, across the earth. And that's uh, something which, you know, is really needed uh, for the government, the military or the enterprises as well to, you know, tap new markets, uh, uh, markets at their end. So currently it's, uh, you know, being used by the B2B customers. But on the contrary, as I, uh, you know, mentioned in my slides that, um, things like the entertainment industry or the direct to home uh, entertainment in case of televisions and radios that is something we we can consume uh, you know you and me people like you and me so there are a mixed bunch of uh, uh, you know both the areas that the satellite services are targeting and uh, as examples you know currently in uh, in this year itself, starting of this year, we've seen multiple uh, multiple partnerships uh, uh, between different uh, telcos altogether uh, to provide uh, satellite-based services like uh, Geo has uh, partnered with SES and uh, Airtel has partnered with uh, OneWeb, where SES is a French telecom company and uh, OneWeb is a UK-based uh, telecom uh, satellite uh, telecom company, and uh, they have made a partnership to provide uh, uh, satellite broadband services to different enterprises. So yeah, this this is actually a huge step uh, towards uh, the digital age or digital India as we call it. Yep. Sure. Cool. I think there's another question that has come up. So it says that how does 6G network rollout strategy span out in terms of support of technology and readiness of enterprises considering the 5G rollout challenges? Uh, so I'll take that one. Uh, sure. So in terms of uh, uh, in terms of uh, the 6G uh, rollout, right? Uh, currently, uh, as uh, you know, as you can see that the uh, KPIs which are, uh, 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 you know, which are KPIs which are defined for uh, the 6G rollout, they are anyways, uh, you know, at a higher level than what we see uh, with the 5G rollout altogether. Now, uh, when it comes to, uh, you know, the current 5G age that we are, uh, we are living in, it's still, uh, uh, you know, at, uh, at a point where uh, there are AI applications altogether, there is high speed, uh, high speed data. But when it comes to 6G, the uh, the thought uh, uh, that it brings with it is completely AI, uh, uh, you know, a complete AI rollout where uh, everything has to talk to everything as we uh, as we mentioned. And the challenges, uh, uh, you know, that it uh, that comes with it are definitely there. That uh, uh, you know, the the connectivity that is uh, uh, expected out of it is something which will definitely uh, uh, will definitely be something that needs to be catered. And the expanse that it has to uh, uh, cover altogether will definitely be need to be supported uh, uh you know by 
different uh, different levels of uh, uh, different levels of uh, technology that there is so yeah the challenges would be there but it's definitely something to look forward to sure sure cool cool thanks uh, thanks ru and thanks ap so i think these are the questions that we have for now but in case there are any other questions so do send them to us and we will be happy to address them later uh, before i conclude this session i would really like to thank both ru and saiti for taking us through such interesting insights and of course a big thank you to all our viewers who tuned in for this webinar and we definitely look forward to having you join us in the next session of Apple Digital Connect. Thank you so much.